Hey guys, how are you going? Today I wanted to give you an overview of my DIY lathe, talk about its design, cost, limitations, and what I learned from this project. So this is my homemade lathe that has a chuck that can accommodate material for turning up to 80 millimeters in diameter. It has a swing of 100 millimeters, allowing for stock with flanges as large as 200 millimeters. Its ways are 400 millimeter long linear rails on a 600 mil bed. The cross slide has approximately 150 millimeters of travel, but no compound capability to cut bevels. Finally, the motor can operate from as low as 60 RPM to more than 1000 RPM, aka, crap, that's too fast, turn it off. Now this lathe has taken me more than three years to build to the point where it can actually be used now. It also still lacks a lot of modern conveniences, so why did I make it? Why didn't I just buy something readily available? Good question. If you look at this lathe on paper, the value proposition just isn't there. But as with all things, if I think I can do it myself, I will at least first try. More importantly, I wanted something that gave me the right capabilities in a lathe. Lathes on the market with the kind of footprint that my lathe has, this kind of size, don't really exist. I would be limited to turning relatively small stock, and I also thought my design might turn out better than something on the market for a similar outlay of dollar dues. We will see. So I've talked about its on-paper specs, its capabilities, as you might have seen in some of my recent videos abroad, which is an excellent result. I've turned 3D prints, wood, plastics, and resin, and I've also had moderate success with aluminium of various grades too. Being able to turn aluminium was my goal, but never guaranteed. And this is all using carbide turning tools, for the record. The lathe's design is based around a 200mm by 200mm H column. Onto this the ways are mounted, which are MGN 15 15mm linear rails a modulus one gear rack for carriage traversal, the headstock and motor and controller, which are at the rear. The carriage sits on four linear guide blocks, as does the cross slide. These are holding up well, these rails, although by my calculations, they are over spec for the job they're doing here. The carriage itself is just 12 mil steel plate, same as the cross slide. Attached to the rear of the carriage is a DRO sensor, which gives me 10 micron positional accuracy for the carriage. The tool holder is a component of my own design and made of more 12mm steel plate. M6 fasteners hold the tools in place, and the tool holder itself is bolted onto the cross slide with an M12 bolt. Creation of the spindle is something I outsource to those far more talented than I, which has a welded back plate to accommodate the British small arms chuck. And these bearings in the spindle all sit on an aluminium headstock. The motor is from an old treadmill that was junked, and what ultimately sparked this project. If only I had known how much a free treadmill motor would cost me in the end. So in regards to cost, it's a fair sum. So the motor was free. End of story? Stop there? No? Okay, well the motor was free. The chuck was about $60. The bed was about 60 in materials. The rails were about 200 All the plate was about another 100 The controller was about 20 All the gearing equipment was about 60 Bearings, 80 second time around. All the tooling about 40 and some fasteners say 30, so that comes to a grand sum of about $650. $500 would buy me a new cheap lathe or a quality used unit. So what don't I have? Well, the primary issues start with a lack of a tailstock. Without this, long work pieces are unsupported at the furthest end from the chuck. I then start to have issues as seen in my Genoso Blaster video where cutting isn't easy nor is it clean. I also don't have any easy way to cut concentric holes in the end of stock either without this tool, so it's on my to-do list. An auto-feeding lead screw would be great too. This would improve the surface finish of parts and make jobs easier. It isn't really possible to cut threads on parts manually either at the moment, so this would open this up for me too. There are a number of 3D printed parts on this lathe, and believe it or not, they're doing a great job. The spindle pulley adapter, the bearing pressure plate, the inductive sensor mount, and the most critical element to the cross slide, the lead screw nut, are 3D printed. The friction is a little bit high on this latter part, but the opposite is true of the carriage. The linear rails are just too slippery. With a lathe, you need a decent amount of static friction, which these guides just do not. When I'm facing the parts, the carriage will move away from the chuck, from the force of the cutting, and this creates a conical finish on the part unintentionally. Back pressure on the carriage helps, but it's a manual process, it isn't maintained easily. A locking mechanism or brake is also on my to-do list. So, was it worth it? <laughs> Most certainly, if only for the fact that I can say I made my own lathe. 
I'm certainly under no illusion that I made something more expensive and possibly not as well as something available on the market. Learning as I go is not the cheap and effective way to do things, but it works and plenty well for what I want. You will certainly see me making more projects with this lathe in the future, and I have lots to do, that's for sure. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to see more of this kind of content, chuck us a like and a sub. It's much appreciated. Catch you later. Bye.